In this lecture, we continue to look at function composition. It's convenient at times to break a function down into pieces so that we may view the function itself as a composition of two or more functions. For example, let's look at h of x equal to square root of 3x plus 4. If we input an x value into the function h, we first compute 3x plus 4, and then we take the square root. So we could view the function h as a composition of a function g of x that maps x to 3x plus 4, and f of x, the square root function. In this case, h is f composed with g, where g is 3x plus 4, and f is the square root function. This is an example of taking a complicated function and breaking it down into its simple pieces. Here are some more examples. In each of these functions, we're given a function f of x, and then also a function h of x, and we want to find g so that h is the composition of f and g. In problem 1, for example, f is 10 to the x, and h is 10 to the x squared minus 17. We're going to try to find a function g so that h is f composed with g. Our solution here, if h is 10 to the x squared minus 17, and we want it to be f composed with g of x, then make g be x squared minus 17. And verify then that when we run x through g, we get x squared minus 17. And then when we run it through f, we put that x squared minus 17 into the exponent position. In the second example, suppose h of x is x squared plus 4. And we want to write that as f composed with g, where h was the square root function, and f where f of x is the square root function, then make g of x be x squared plus 4. So f composed with g will be the square root of the quantity x squared plus 4. We're breaking the function h of x down into two pieces. g squares x and adds 4, and f takes the square root. Let's do some more examples. For each of these functions below, we're going to decompose h into the composition of two functions, f and g. So uh, problem 1, h of x is x plus 5, the quantity squared. Problem 2, h of x is the cube root of 5x squared plus 1. And in problem 3, h of x is 2 to the cosine x. So let's look at problem 1. Think of h of x as x plus 5 all squared as a composition of the function that adds 5 and the function that squares things. So we'll first add 5 and then square. This more complicated expression is a, comp is a composition of a function that first takes x to x 5x squared plus 1 and then takes the cube root. We could think of h of x equals 2 to the cosine x as a composition of the cosine function and this exponential function 2 to the x. And in fact, we can do this, creating the functions g and f, even, even if we have not yet studied the cosine function. Our notation just leads us to the answer. Once we understand function composition, there is no reason to stop at composing just two functions. We can compose a chain of functions, running an input x through one function after another. For example, suppose that f of x is x squared, g of x is 3x plus 5, and h of x is the square root function. If we run x through f, g, and h in that order, we have h composed with g composed with f of x, which is h of g of f of x, which is h of g of x squared, which is h of 3x squared plus 5, which is the square root of 3x squared plus 5. There's no limit to the number of functions we can chain together. For example, suppose f of x is a square function, g of x is this linear function, h of x is a square root function, and j of x is a cosine function. This is getting exciting. We could run x through f, g, h, and j in that order, and get j composed with h composed with g composed with f of x, which is j of h of g of f of x, which is j of h of g of x squared, which is j of h of 3x squared plus 5, which is j of the square root of 3x squared plus 5, which is the cosine of the square root of 3x squared plus 5. Again, we can do this even if we have not yet studied the cosine function. We just follow our notation. In calculus, after we study the derivative of a function, we will learn to take the derivative of a chain of functions composed together in this manner. The method we developed there is called the chain rule for derivatives. 